Okay, so today is going to be a tough one. There's a lot to learn today, so stay with me. This will be one of the longer lessons of the year. Okay, so get ready. All right, first thing, you need to understand how to do graphing systems of linear inequalities, and you're going to be learning how to uh, write equations for those. In the real world, inequalities are things like, I want more than this, or I want less than that. And you know, sometimes it can be or equal to, like for instance, the ages in this class are more than, it, the ages would be either 14 or greater than that. So then you'd say a greater than or equal to 14. The ages are greater than or equal to 14. Get the idea? All right, so and they'll get much more complicated than that, of course, by the end. If I said there's more than 10 people in line, if you use P for people, would you write me an inequality for that? Turn it my way when you're done. It's just a simple little inequality. More than 10. All right, I'm seeing three people right so far. Noop. Yup. Yup, yup. Got to have the P first. Yup. Yup, yup, yup. Layer. Tilt it. There you go. Now it's good. Yup. Backwards. P first. Good. Okay. So we're looking for the P first. And then you say less than or greater than, and it says more than, greater than, 10. Okay, now some people get confused if I just said, say this sign to me. It's hard to know is it less than or greater than, but the way I have that re to remember it is it kind of looks like an L, doesn't it? Sort of, look like an L. Well, it looks a lot more like an L than this. That's a less than sign. Which one looks more like an L? Pretty obvious, the one on top looks less, it looks more like an L, and therefore it's a less than sign. Okay, so that's less than, that's what then? Greater than. So less than, greater than. Okay. So that's a repeat of the last question. So, and there's the answer to it. Now this is just reminding us you can graph these things. Everybody, do your best to remember how to graph this and make a quick sketch of the graph. Do you remember how to graph x is greater than 10? Try it. Graph it on there. See if you do it right. The way you can tell if you do it right is to flip to the next couple pages. Check it yourself. The next couple of pages in the smart board presentation. Say the answer. Yes. Good question. Is it an open or closed circle? Well, can it be 10? No, so it's an open circle. If you fill something in, it means it can be that. So you can pick any of these numbers to be 10. Didn't matter. But you definitely want the open circle, and you definitely want a shade to the right. How many of you did that much right? OK, good. What if I change it to or equal to 10? Then all I got to do is one thing different. Fill it, in. Fill it in. Good. Okay. Moving on. So that looks like that is the final answer if we change it to or equal to. Okay. Get to this page. Write an inequality for the statement. Susan called to say that the only tickets available for the Britney Spears concert are in row 10 or above, but less than row 40. Britney Spears. Wow. That was this question was written like 10 years ago. All right. So, uh, row 10 or above, but less than row 40. In your notes, it has the, doesn't it have this brown or gray thing? Oh, okay. So, the reason you would do it this way is you always put this number on the left, that number on the right, the, the, basically the small numbers on the left and the big numbers on the right, and then it's really easy from there. These signs will always be right, except for whether or not they're or equal to. Do you get how it says 10 or above? So that's or equal to. Less than 40 means not an or equal to. Because see, it doesn't say 40. Less than 40. So this is a less than sign without the equals. All right, and then if you actually graph it, it would look like that, of course. Okay, moving on. Two variables. The problem with two variables is you always have to solve for y. Because So take that one right there, and would you just solve it for y? See if you remember the rules on solving these little puppies. There's one thing that a lot of people forget, and we'll see who remembers it and who doesn't. Don't say. Figure it out. And then I'll tell you if you're right or wrong when you turn it my way. You lost your X, so no. Something's wrong with your X. Something's wrong with your X. Uh, you lost the number four. Is uh, somehow, somehow you put it with your X. You don't want to do that. There's one. Yup. Good. Uh, 
You, something's goofy with your X. Something's goofy with your X. All right. A lot of people remembered to flip the sign. That's the good news. But only like one in five people are getting this right. Watch what I do. Minus four, minus four. Negative Y less than or equal to X minus four. Do you get what I did so far? All I did was subtract four. Does subtracting four make me change the sign around? No. But this next part will because there's a negative. And if I ever multiply by a negative, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to times by negative one here. And I'm going to times by negative one here and here. All the parts have to change, including the sign. So this changes to positive y. This changes to greater than or equal to. This changes to negative x. And this changes to plus 4. And there's only like four people in the room that did it, all those steps right. Any questions? OK, notice I changed everything when I multiplied by negative 1, including the sign. All right, now, to actually graph that thing, well, here's, here's the process again for getting it down to greater than or equal to. Now, to graph it, I'm going to change it to equal to. It's like, what? All I work with this sign, and now you're going to switch to the equal sign? Yes, because to graph, you're used to graphing things that say equal to. The only difference is, when it says like greater than, you're just going to shade above the line. So first, we've got to graph this line. So how do you graph that again? You remember how this, this is the slope? And this is the y-intercept. Remember that from point slope form? OK, so to graph it, here's the y-intercept of 4. And the slope is negative 1. It's a negative, so I'm going to say it's negative 1 over 1, because you can put anything over 1. This is the rise. This is the run. Do you remember how you rise negative 1? It's down 1. And then you run 1, 1 to the right. See how that's working? Down one, over one. Down one, over one. That's how I can tell this graph is in the right spot. Now, all I graphed was equal to. I haven't even dealt with the greater than sign yet, but I will in a second. Yes, sir. Yep. If you put a negative on everything by putting a parenthesis around it, that is acceptable, but... You couldn't have graphed it at this point. It would look like this. How would you graph that? See what I mean? You have to distribute that negative out and get this negative x plus 4 thing. OK, so make sure you distribute it at the end. It would have been a good start. All right, moving on to this. The only difference is it's greater than now. So now that it's a greater than, you shade above it. And there's your answer. What does that really mean? It means everything that's shaded in there will work. Everything that's not shaded in will not work. I'll prove it. This point right here is 6, 2. I just picked a random point from inside the shaded region there. If I put in an x is 6 and a y is 2, it says 2 is greater than or equal to negative 6 plus 4. Negative 6 plus 4 is actually negative 2. 2 is bigger than or equal to negative 2. It worked. Any point you pick from the shaded side would work. Any point you pick from the other side would not work, like 0, 0. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to stick in 0, 0 and show you it does not work. If I stick in a 0 here, I get negative 0 plus 4, which is 4. Put in a 0 here, I have 0. 0 is greater than or equal to 4. That is not true. 0 is not bigger than or equal to 4. So that didn't work. So nothing on the outside of the shaded region there would work. The only tricky part is where is the dividing line between the two areas? The line itself is the dividing line between the two areas. This line right here, would that line actually work? The things that are on that line? Yes, because it says or equal to. The points on the line are the points where it's equal to. So if it says or equal to, everything on the line works. If it doesn't say that, if this didn't have that there, then everything on the line would not work. And so the way you're supposed to graph it then is you're supposed to use a dotted line if the stuff on the line isn't going to work. So if you were supposed to graph y is greater than x plus 6, you'd go, OK, the y-intercept is 6 and the slope is 1, so it's going to look something like that. It says greater than, so I shade above it. But what's the catch again? 
Why is this one different than the other one? It's a dotted line. Why should it be a dotted line? Because the things that are on the line are equal to it. And this doesn't say or equal to. All right, so if you had two equations, this one and this one, I'll do in red. Which one would be a dotted line? The red one or the black one? Red one. And when it comes to the line itself, which one would the points on the line actually work? The black one or the red one? The black one. The black one, they'd actually work the points on the line because it says equal to right there. All right, so here, if this one's supposed to be dotted and this one's supposed to be a solid line, do you get that it makes some sense in the, by looking just at the symbol, that this symbol here compared to this symbol here, this symbol here has a solid line in it. See, solid line has a solid line in it. The, dot, the one that's supposed to be dotted does not have a solid line in it. Now, granted, it doesn't have a dotted line either, but you know what I mean? If you're just trying to remember it based on that, the sign that has the solid line in it will use a solid line. The sign that does not have a or equal to in it will not have a solid line. It will have a dotted line. Okay. What if it is just one variable like that? X equals 4. Do you remember where X equals 4 is? It's a line like that. And what if it said X is greater than 4? Which way do I shade now if there's no above? Greater than is to the right. And it just makes sense. The numbers get bigger as you go to the right. So greater than is to the right. And if it said less than, you'd go to the left. All right, I think that covers everything that I need to know from this. I'm just going to show you. Here's one where it's a dotted line. See how it has a y-intercept of 8? It's a dotted line because there's no or equal to. And it has a slope of 1 because the number in front of this x is a 1. And that means 1 over 1, which means rise 1 and run 1. So rise 1, oops, rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1, rise 1, run 1. It makes sense to you that blue line should be this one. All right. If you graph a bunch of lines and they all are shaded, like let's say I shade this one above, say I shade this one below, I shade this one to the left. Notice that when I shade them, I don't try to take time to shade in the entire graph on this side of it. I just make a little shaded side of the line. Do you get that they all overlap in here? And that's the important part. That means things that are inside that overlapped place will work in all three equations. I'm going to show you, if I go a little bit farther here, this one's showing how you're shading underneath the dotted blue line. This is showing all three of them shaded at once. And that area is called the feasible region. Feasible is another word for possible. Like if I said, at lunch today, I'm going to run down and get a sub at... Uh, uh, subway or something and come back. That's feasible. Like I have enough time to do that. That would work. That's within the constraints. Okay, so the word feasible means it works. So this region works. That means if I pick this point right here, which is 4 comma 10, if I put it in here, it'll work. If I put it in here, it'll work. And if I put it in here, it'll work too. You just got to be careful which of those actually goes in, the X or the Y. And from that point right there, which one will go in? The X or the Y? The X. And the X is 4. Do you get off? I put in a 4 right there. 4 is less than 6, so it works. Okay, so the point is anything in this feasible region works. Anything that's outside the feasible region might work in one of the equations, but it won't work in all of them. If I pick this spot right here, 0, 0, it's one of my favorite places because it's so easy to cancel things and stuff. If I put in a 0, 0, let's see if it worked here. 0 less than or equal to negative 0 is just 0. 0 plus 4 is 4. Is 0 greater than 4? Or is 0 equal to 4? No. So that spot right here, the origin, would not have worked for that equation right there. So it's for sure not in the feasible region. It works on one of them, though. This one it works. Is 0 less than 6? Yeah, that one works for that one. But it has to work in all of them to really answer your question. All right, so what are we doing with this? Why are we doing this? Because in the real world, 
if you are like, let's say, for instance, Apple Corporation, you've got all these places that manufacture stuff. Or let's say you're a big company like Tesla making cars, and they're trying to break in with the, be with the big boys like GM and Ford and stuff. And Tesla is doing well so far with their electric cars. Uh, they're building right now a gigafactory, they're calling it. It's going to be the biggest lithium battery factory in the world. Uh, it'll put out like half of all lithium batteries in the world will come out of this one giant factory. They want to set this sucker up right, because if they do it right, they can get cheap batteries for their electric cars and batteries that are powerful enough to like last a long time. So if you can conquer the battery part, they'll, everybody would have an electric car. If you got a strong enough, easy enough to charge battery, why not? I mean, that's, that's like way easier than gas. You don't have to go out of the gas station. You just plug it in at home. And uh, electric cars, I really do think, are kind of moving towards being the, the car of the future. Um, but for right now, the battery is the biggest challenge. So anyway, this Tesla company in real life is building this factory. They want to optimize it because do you get, if you have like a billion dollar business and you can do it only 1% better, that's a huge amount of money. Because if you have a billion dollar business and 1% of a billion is worth trying to make sure that you're getting every extra percent. Okay, let's be specific. On a $1 million, 10% of $1 million is $100,000. So that's just on, on a million dollar business. If you can do it 10% better, that'd be $100,000. What would 1% better be? 10,000. So if you only have a $1 million business, you can make $10,000 more by just being a little bit more efficient, 1% more efficient, 10 grand. That's a lot of money. So you, tie, you scale that up from a million to a billion, that's a thousand times more. So it's 10,000 times a thousand is what you'd make on a billion dollars. 10,000 times a thousand. So you add three zeros to it. Here's my 10,000, now I'm going to add three zeros. That's if you can make a one billion dollar business only 1% more efficient. $10 million. What if you hired an engineer guy and paid him $100,000 a year, which is not too bad a salary, and he could figure out a way to save you 1% more efficient? He would make your company $10 million, and his salary was only $100,000. That's a great deal. You should hire that guy because you can be more efficient. That's what businesses do. We're talking about that in the context of these little math problems today. And we'll start with easy ones, but you can see how a real life business would have constraints. Like, we can't make more than 50 batteries at this factory. That means that'd be like this. I can't make, it has to be less than 50. It might be this line right here. It has to stay underneath that because we can't make more than 50. That's the most we can do in a day. And there might be some other line that's like, well, we have to for sure make more than 17 batteries, but otherwise we won't be keep giving them enough supply and you know our, our uh, stores will be angry with us because we're not giving them enough. And you factor in all these things and you find this. Here's the, in the end, these are the things that are feasible. And my big finish is this. Listen, listen, some of you aren't with me anymore. These are the answers, the corners. The corners are the key. The answer to the real world questions will be always be one of the corners. We know what the official math name for corner is? Vertex or vertices. The corner, ver, the plural of vertex is vertices. So it's one of the vertices of the feasible region will be your answer. Okay, so now we're not going to do this jelly bean problem because we have enough real world, or enough problems in our homework that we got to do together. So. Before we head to lunch, uh, which will happen in about three minutes, everybody needs to graph these three lines and see where they cross each other. I'll help you if you get there with me right now. So the first one is x is greater than or equal to 1. Here's a 1. x is greater than or equal to 1 goes like this. That's pretty easy. Should the line be solid or dotted? Solid, because this is a we're equal to. See if you can figure out where y is greater than or equal to 0 is. A lot of people are going to do it the wrong place. Try it once and I'll tell you in a second. Where y 
First of all, I ask yourself, where's y equal to 0? And then you take that line and you shade above it. y equals 0 is right here. Where's another spot where y equals 0? That's a spot, that's a spot, that's a spot. So it goes like that. And it says greater than, see a shade above. There we go. Finish the last one by subtracting 2x from both sides and graphing y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 6. And see where you should shade down and then shade it in. It'll be a triangle if you did it right. And I'll tell you if you're right or not when you turn it my way. I'll give you a hint. It's not exactly like this, but it'll be something like that. Okay, turn it my way, and I'll tell you if you're doing it right. Can't tell where your shaded in region is. I, see, look at his. That's, that's what I'm looking for, that kind of thing. Nice. Yup. Something's wrong with one of your triangles, but you get the general idea. Yup. Yup. Something's wrong with your triangle. It ends up being a triangle. Can you zoom in on it tighter? I can't see that. That one looks right. Good job. Can't see where the shaded, it should be a triangle that stands out to you when you shaded it all in. All right, there you go. All right, I'm going to finish this. Wait, sit down. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm going to finish this one for you. So this line should go at 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right there. And it should have a slope of negative 2. That means fall 2 and run 1. Fall 2, run 1. Fall 2, run 1. And it looks like that. And then you shade. Look, it says less than. So underneath it. Your final answer is that little area right there. Then, if this was a real-world problem, the answer would come from either here or here or there. That's where the vertices of the feasible region are. We'll learn more of that after lunch. Go. All right, so we're back from lunch. And I'm reminding you of how this works. Generally speaking, you want to make those lines overlap. And you're looking for that shaded-in region and where the corners of that region. That's called the feasible region. All right, uh, let's not do example two out of the notes. Let's go on to doing your actual homework. So uh, I'm going to pause for a moment while we pull up one part of the homework. Yo, all right, we're back from the finding that. The first one is x is greater than or equal to 1. How do I graph that? We'll find a spot where x is equal to 1. Just one spot. That's a spot where x equals 1 right there. And then you just have to decide, do I go up and down or go left and right? For x equals things, that's like the y-axis. It's counterintuitive. It's an up and down thing. There we go. And now should I shade to the right or left? Greater than means to the right. So it looks like this. Come on, some of you aren't in the right spot. Okay, so this right here uh, is the graph of x is greater than or equal to 1. Now i got to go graph the next thing. y is greater than or equal to x plus 1. I start at 1 on the y-intercept right there. And then I have a slope of what number's in front of there? A 1. So it's 1 over 1, so it's rise 1 and run 1. That means it's going to go like this. And there's my line. Going like that. And now I'm supposed to shade greater than. What's that mean? Up above. There we go. And then the last one is y is less than or equal to 8. First of all, I find a spot where y is equal to 8, which is right there. And then it makes sense if you think about it that you can't put other spots on this line because that's y equals 6, y equals 4. That doesn't make any sense. So instead, we go this way. And it's less than, so it's under. When it's all said and done, there's your feasible region where they all overlap. 
All I need you to do is one more problem off of this page. We're not going to do this entire homework assignment uh, this because we're doing two assignments at once. So just go and do problem number two right now. Yes, sir. When it's greater than or equal to, the line is solid. You are correct. So all of these lines you're about to do on number two, those are all going to be solid lines again. We really should mix that up a bit for next year. Maybe we should throw in some dotted lines. But for right now, they're all solid lines. Okay, you're doing number two right now. What about linear programming? Uh, for right now, just would you focus on number two? Work on number two. I'll tell you about the other homework in just a minute. We aren't going to do any more off this worksheet. We're just doing problems one and two. That way you can focus on the other worksheet for most of your assignment. Okay, this first one for those reading along at home is x is greater than or equal to 3. And that means here's a spot where x is 3. And i got to go this way. Then it says greater than, so I shade to the right of it. It'll keep your paper much less messy if you just shade a little bit on one side of it. Next, I think it's really hard for me to read it, but does it say y is less than or equal to 7? Is, it, is the second one an x or a y? x, okay. Sorry about that. x is less than or equal to 7. So now I've got to find 7 where x is 7. That's like there. So there's the line for x is 7. And less than means I shade to the left of it. So obviously, I'm going between those two lines. Now, the next one I'm pretty sure is a y. y is less than or equal to 10 for that one. So then y is 10 is up here. And less than that means underneath it. Oh, now I've got kind of a rectangular box shaping up here. But then the very last one is this one, and as I graph that one, it's negative x, so the slope is negative 1, and it starts at 8. So I start right there, and I have a slope of negative 1. That means fall 1, run 1, fall 1, run 1, fall 1, run 1, and it looks like that. And now it says greater than or equal to. This again was y is greater than or equal to negative x plus 8. So greater than or equal to goes above that. There we go. Final answer. Raise your hand if you had that right. Okay, good. Now, uh, that's the basics of how to graph these. Now we need to actually learn how to take real world problems and make the equations for them. Once you've made the equation for them, you just do this. You graph them. But we got to learn how to take real-world problems and make the equations. All right. So next, find your homework. And I'll just start with that instead of making up example problems here. Uh, the homework is now says 519, today's date. So look for the homework that says 5-19 on top of it. I'll pause for a second while I get that. All right. So here is that worksheet. It's called 6.6a, Linear Programming. And it's the one that says assigned on May 19th. Kesh is a college student who's majoring in math education. She'd like to earn some money to help with expenses. She has two part-time jobs. All right, so she's going to get one of these is going to be called X. And it says down in the problem here that X is the hours she works at the Academic Support Center. And Y is going to be the hours at a restaurant. Those are her two jobs. One's called X, one called Y. X is for the academic support center. Y is for the restaurant. Okay. She earns 8 bucks an hour tutoring at the academic support center and 10 bucks an hour working at a local restaurant. Although she would like to work more hours at the tutoring center, she likes the higher pay at a local restaurant. She can tutor no less than 2 and no more than 8 hours per week. That sounds like equations to me. What is Kesha's maximum earning potential if she works a total of no more than 20 hours per per week. All right, so here's how you do this. 1A, do you agree that tutoring is about X? Okay, so if it's X is whatever, what is the equation for this one, this first one? Tell me some stuff I know about the tutoring. 
Yes. Good. X is greater than or equal to 2. That seemed like something you could graph. Yeah, later on we'll graph it. All right, so X is greater than or equal to 2 means the tutoring has to be greater than or equal to 2 hours. How about the 8, though? Less than or equal to 8. You got it. For part B, they didn't say anything about rules about the restaurant, but in the real world, there's something you can't do with the total hours you're going to work at the restaurant. Something about why you could say in the real world. It's not over. Okay, there's something you can't work over. That's true. And there's also something you can't work under. And that's true. What I'm looking for is an impossible situation. We've got to avoid impossible. What's a real world common sense thing that you can't do? You can't work less than what? Zero. So you have to say greater than or equal to zero. The restaurant did not say that you couldn't take a week off. It doesn't say anywhere in our rules that they want you to work five hours a week or whatever. If it did, we'd use five. But we have to say, just logically, you can't have a negative number. So that's called a common sense constraint. A lot of people miss those on the homework because they don't think about how I can't have a factory making a negative number of widgets, for instance. So your common sense constraints are in the real world, there's almost nothing that can go negative. You can't have time be negative. You can't have amount of money go. Well, actually, money can go negative if you borrow it. Yes? All right. That's kind of right, but the, the hours she can work in one, during one week will fix what you just said. There you go. X plus Y. X plus Y has to be what? No more than 20 hours per week, so... Less than or equal to 20. You got it. Do you get, if we graph all four of those things, that they will all overlap and make it a little triangular or maybe rectangular area, and that will be our feasible region? All right. Now, let me help you with this next part where you're graphing the system. Uh, to graph this puppy, basically, you're going to be able to pull in a graph onto your work. I can't do that as well as you can. If you're on notability right now, or not notability, sorry. Uh, is it notability? Okay. Dang, I always get those confused. Somebody erased my word underneath the fish, so I was going to go back to like some other word we used to use. Okay, but notability, the program we're using now, has a little plus in the upper right-hand corner. There's two ways you can do this. You can do it with the wrench or you can do it with the plus. I would recommend the plus, and I would pull in a, what do you think? Sticky. Pull in a sticky, and then you want grid. There's graph paper. All right. Now, you can make it bigger, too, by, like, grabbing and dragging and stuff. Uh, but just make it any size that feels comfortable to you. And don't worry too much about that optimizing equation. That's not going to take up much room. So you can kind of make that over the top of most of that optimizing question that we'll have later. All right. So you make yourself a little graph that you can, sticky note, you can make a graph on. And I'm going to just do a rough sketch of it. X is greater than or equal to 2. Well, this is the X direction. This is the Y direction. So X, here's a spot where X is 2. So you go like this. It has to be bigger than 2. And X has to be less than or equal to 8. Here's, let's say here's 8. And it has to be less than that. And then Y is greater than or equal to 0. That just means basically it has to stay above the X axis. Stay positive because you can't work a negative number of hours. And then the last one... Uh, X plus Y has to be less than 20. This one you want to subtract X from both sides and go Y is less than or equal to negative X plus 20. That's what you need to graph after you solved it for Y. So then you say to yourself, okay, where is 20? I don't know on your graph, but I'm going to say that's 20. And then, you know, maybe you want to count each box as 5 or something on the Y axis to make it work for you better. And then y has to be 
a slope of negative x, which means negative 1. A slope of negative 1 means basically that you're going to go at a nice steady angle. And then it says less than. So, less than. Final answer, this feasible region right here. And I don't know if you remember this, but the only things that could possibly be the final right answer are the corners of the feasible region. This spot is going to be her most profitable spot, or this spot, or this spot, or this spot. The corners. Those are the only spots that could be the right answer. The four spots where they all overlap. Okay. This spot right here is at x equals 2 and y is 18. This spot over here is at uh, 8, comma, can anybody read their graph for me and tell me how high it goes up? 8, comma what? Well, I guess you'll have to figure that out. You've got to read your own graph and see how high this goes. I'm guessing it's 8, comma 2 or something. I'm not sure because I haven't graphed it. You'll have to look at your own graph. These corner points, though, those are the things you're going to put into what's called the optimization equation. All right, that's the next part. Everybody stop what you're doing on the graphing, and let's try to find this thing called an optimization equation. All right, so she is earning money, and so far, all we have for her uh, earning potential is she's working some hours of X plus some hours of Y. But that doesn't factor in any money. Somebody smart can figure this out. This isn't that hard. What, what do you think? 8 for the X's? You're doing this, not me. So? Would that make sense? Eight for each X plus you're going to get ten dollars for each Y. If Y hours are restaurant hours and X hours are tutoring hours, there you go. That is called an optimization equation. Not the whole thing, but you're going to finish up Kesha's problem for sure right now. So let's keep going on that. Now it says find Kesha's maximum weekly earnings. That means Remember, there's only four points you have to check. There's a ton of points in the feasible region, but only four of them could possibly be it. If I remember right, it looked kind of like this was the feasible region, and there were four spots. This spot, that spot, that spot, and that spot were the corners. I can tell you this. If it's ever a profit situation, more is always better. So the zero, zero, the, like the, the spot got back here, that can't be the way you make the most money. Do you get how that's, that's really small on each? It's small on tutoring hours and it's small on restaurant hours. That can't possibly be it. Do you get it's probably either this one or that one? Those are the ones where you're going to have the most hours total. And now just generally think about this. Here's X. Here's Y. Y is restaurant hours. Do we want to have a lot of restaurant hours, which would be a lot of this way, or do we want a lot of tutoring hours to make our most money? A lot of restaurant hours. So of these two spots, this one or this one, which one has more Y? And now you don't have to just know this, like I've been talking it through, but this number would have to be it. Because it's got a lot of Y hours, which are the restaurant hours, which was where you make the most money. All right. So what you should know, maybe you're not as good at this as I am because I've been doing this a long time. What you should know is, you're going to take these four spots and you're going to plug them into this equation. So first of all, what are the four spots? One of them is at 2, 18. I'm just reading off the graph. Another one's at 8, comma. has anybody figured it out yet? Nobody knows where these two lines intersect? All right. Then 8, 12. I'm going to go with that. Even I don't know if that's true or not, but 
I can tell you this, if you work, if you're going to try to work a total of 20 hours, 8 and 12 do add up to 20, so that's probably it. That makes some sense to me. Okay, but you have to read your own graph. Now, by the way, if you can't read your own graph, do you get that this is a spot where two lines are crossing? That's a spot you can get with a graph, with a calculator. We're going to be using the calculator a lot more tomorrow, but your calculator, you just have to type in the one equation, type in the other equation, and find second calculate what? Intersect. Yep. You'd find where those two lines intersect. The calculator could do that for you. See, it's this line and this line intersecting each other. Okay, anyway. But I'm going to now take those four spots, this spot, this spot, this spot, and this spot, and I'm going to, here's two of them, this one and this one, and I'm going to put them into this little equation right here. 8 times x plus 10 times y, and the x on this one is 2, see? And the y on this one's 18. And you multiply that out, 2 times 8 is 16, plus 10 times 8 is 18 is 180, 180 plus 16, 196 dollars if she does that. That's pretty good. Now let's see if she can make more on the other option, 8 comma 12. 8 parentheses plus 10 parentheses. X is 8 and Y is 12. So this would be 120 plus 8 times 8 is 64. 64 and 120 makes 120 plus 6, 184, is that right? You see how this one's better? That's the optimum situation then. That's the final answer to what would give her the maximum weekly earnings. The maximum weekly earnings would be 196 bucks, and that's if she chooses the 2 comma 18 option. All right. You know it's been a long lesson. I get that. This is not easy. Um, what your assignment is then is, and, and this, if you were Kesha, what would you decide? The point is it's not always about money. If it was about money for sure, then you'd have to go with this route. And if it's not always about money, then you'd have to go with that route. I would contend that if it was always about money, uh, people would do different things in life if you only cared about making money. Because a lot of jobs don't pay that well, but you still like doing them and it might be worth... Anyway, I'll leave that up to you. This one, there's two parts to it. Uh, there's Eli's lunch cart, which is this one. And then there is, further down the homework, Yakawa motorcycles and bicycles. Your assignment is to do those two. We've already done that whole other worksheet together. So now all you're left with is two of these real world kind of problems. They are not super easy and some people are going to wimp out and they're going to say, oh, I don't know what to do. It's write the equations. After you're done writing the equations, you graph the equations. After you're done graphing the equations, you see where they all cross and you find that little feasible region. And once you're done finding the little feasible region, say it looks like this and it shades in there. Then you take the corners of that and you see which of them make the person the most money. And I want you to try two. Eli's lunch cart and Yakawa motorcycles and bicycles. All right, so I'll help you start Eli's lunch cart. So, everybody get there, please. Pausing. Okay, back with you. Eli's Lunch Cart sells burritos and chili. To stay in business, he must sell at least 30 burritos. Ooh, that sounds like an equation. At least 30 burritos. So let's go back to uh, defining what's what. X is burritos. Y is chili. So if we have at least 30 burritos, do you get that we're talking about X's? And X has to be what? Greater than or equal to 30. And 10 orders of chili each day. Ooh, that's an equation. Y, what? Greater than or equal to 10. Cool. Got two done. No more than 40 orders of chili because of limited space. Basically, the can't, guy can't sell a million orders of chili. He doesn't have that much. So no more than 40 orders of chili. That's a Y thing. How does that happen then? Y is what? Less than or equal to 
40. 70 burritos max. X. 70 max. So what do you think? Less than or equal to. Good. And then don't forget to think about the real world. Do you get that your X has to be bigger than zero? Because you can't have negative number of burritos. But we already said it has to be bigger than 30. Do you think we also have to say it has to be bigger than zero? No, we're already saying it's bigger than 30. Okay, so we don't have to include those if they're already taken care of. The total order cannot exceed 90. What does that mean? X plus Y, good. Go ahead. How do you say not exceed? Less than or equal to 90. All right, cool. If you graph all those things, they'll make, it, make this feasible region. You'd want to do that on a nice little insert a post-it or whatever. And then the last thing is, to be able to maximize it, you might want to write down this formula. This is called the optimization equation. For each x, how much does he get? It says profit right here. Profit is a buck 05, 105 per burrito plus the y, that's the other things. And the profit equals this times this. So you got to put the buck five on the burrito. And you got to put the buck 65 on the chili. And there's your optimization equation. And then once you find the corners, you're going to plug them in here and here and figure out which combo makes him the most money. That's all I got for you for today.